When I started the Magnetic Memory Method initiative, I had no idea so many people would want to know why the focus falls on the alphabet. So in this Q&A video, let's get into it. There are many reasons to base your approach on what some of the ancient books called the gematria, which is a Hebrew word that refers to an alpha numeric code you can use to assign a numerical value to a name, word, or phrase based on its letters. We don't always use it for numbers, but when we do, this is now most often called the major system. When we use this approach for something like language learning, the gematria helps with the rapid assignment of bridging figures. When thinking in this way, you also experience greater ease using all of the magnetic modes which are themselves derived from this special way to approach the alphabet. As background to all of this, we are essentially practicing what used to be called Ars Combinatoria, or the art of combination. This art is not really nested inside of Ars Memorativa, or the art of the memory palace, but they work together very well for speed of association. This is something perceived most notably by the great memory master Giordano Bruno, who I have discussed in detail a number of times on this channel. Then there is Ars Quadrata versus Ars Rotunda, which is a long and involved discussion, all of which is modernized in plain language in the Magnetic Memory Method masterclass and explains why our community focuses on real sources for our memory palaces rather than invented ones. Now, to be clear, some people do very well with invented memory palaces, and you can learn more about this process in quite a few episodes of my podcast. The one with Idris Zogai comes to mind as an episode you will probably benefit from if you're interested in memory palaces based on invented locations. In any case, no one is required to make an alphabetical memory palace network, but the catch is this. You're doing it anyway, and have a huge opportunity to optimize and remember a lot more because you shift the way you're approaching the art of memory. Here's what I mean. If you're using real buildings or imagined ones, they will probably have a name, or easily could have one. That name will be built from the alphabet. If I base a memory palace on Donkey Kong or World of Warcraft, these can be encoded as D or W memory palaces, and characters from those realms can be used as bridging figures. So why not harness the associative power of what is going to exist practically by default anyway? By the time you're into hundreds of memory palaces and magnetic images, you'll have seen the logic of it all long ago. You will also have trained your procedural memory to start making these assignments practically on autopilot. It is a special logic that is often more felt than understood, in the same way that you could spend forever wondering why the multiplication table works as it does, or you can just learn it and then experience its power. When I started teaching these techniques, I decided not to drown people in the why behind all this, because neuroscientists can't even find consciousness in the brain. I don't know why the alphabet exists either, but there is much interesting information to learn about the role of the gematria in the development of memory techniques and you will enjoy many hours of elucidating entertainment if you learn more about these matters. But I've found that most people who come to the Magnetic Memory Method just want something they can develop that works, rather than a long history lecture that even if it maps perfectly well onto science, doesn't get them much closer to using the techniques. This knowledge will definitely improve the practice of the serious power user of the demonics, but is it absolutely necessary? Despite my own enthusiasm for preserving the history of these techniques and filling as many gaps as possible into the how and the why of it all, you just need to focus on the alphabet and space itself. Space being something that both contains the alphabet and can be named by the very thing it contains. Or as old Thales used to say, Megaston Topos Hapanthagar Kori. Space is ultimate because it contains all things. Another point worth considering. Although many of the memory athletes and other practitioners I have interviewed over the years might describe what they're doing differently, practice all seems to boil down to the same essential Ars Combinatoria fused with Ars Memorativa. Not all memory competitors are teachers, and some deliberately hide their techniques to avoid getting beaten at the next competition. But as Giordano Bruno himself points out, if you think enough about these techniques and the nature of information itself, you will see that every human brain is similar enough that the techniques are working pretty much the same in the minds of the masters. How else could there be the concept of mastery if shared experiences weren't available for both perception and reception? So, master a multi-sensory memory palace 
and the alphabetical method and let the results flow in without overthinking it. Again, no one has to do it this way, but with any serious time spent with the memory arts, you'll almost certainly wind up having done something very much like this in the end. Given the nature of human cognition and the information systems our civilizations have evolved, I think Bruno hit the nail on the head and I cannot imagine a different outcome. Yet strangely, new little variations arise all the time, which like math and its incompleteness with infinity only goes to show us the power of embracing limits. This is what the art of memory is really all about, the exponential power of voluntarily embracing limits through the theory and practice of information. I thank you for watching, especially our channel members and new subscribers, and I thank everyone for hitting that thumbs up to let the robots know that humans still care about the great memory tradition and real brain exercise. And let me know, does this way of looking at how the magnetic memory method works help you out? If you want more insights, please check out my video on three ways to use the memory palace technique for language learning next. Because when you think about it, what else do we learn except language? Whether it's math or whether it's a long speech or whether it's the names of people. Language in space, the space that has developed a way to name itself.